In this video, I will tell you about flipped classroom teaching, where the idea is to provide videos that the students can watch at home, such that the time in class can be dedicated to active learning instead of passive lectures. I will also say a few words about how this can be done and tell you about some of the arguments that exist in favor of using this teaching style. Traditional lectures have long been criticized for being teacher-centered and passive, and people have argued in favor of active learning for many years. This slide contains a collection of quotes from people who are in favor of active learning. And as you can see from this quote by Sophocles, this perspective is not exactly new. And there is a substantial amount of research that has argued that active learning is a great teaching style. However, in spite of all of these papers arguing things like learning is not a spectator sport, most university courses are still centered around traditional lectures, and I think it's fair to ask yourself if we can't replace all of these lectures with active learning. Well, this is precisely what the flipped classroom teaching style is all about. In difference to traditional teaching, uh, where students attend lectures and then do active learning such as problem solving at home, the idea here is to meet the material through interactive videos that you can watch at home, such that the hours in class can be dedicated to active learning. A consequence of this is that simple learning tasks such as remembering are performed alone at home, whereas the more difficult ones are performed in class with the support of your peers and a teacher. One thing that I would like to point out here and emphasize is that we have now effectively replaced one teaching element, the lectures, with two things, namely interactive videos to watch at home and active learning activities in class. We will now talk a bit more about these two teaching elements and discuss how useful they are compared to traditional lectures. The videos used in a flipped classroom are often simple screencasts with a voiceover, pretty much like the video that you're watching now. And typically they also contain interactive quizzes that the students are expected to answer for self-assessment. There are many possible advantages with videos and there are actually studies that uh, show that video lectures outperform in-person lectures. Uh, though the context and setting may vary depending on the study. Uh, for instance, in this study from 2006, students who received interactive videos learned more than those who received lectures. However, whereas we use the term interactive to point out the, that the videos contain quizzes, they use the same term to indicate that students can pause, rewind, and select the part of the material that uh, they could watch next. And the videos that they used here didn't actually contain quizzes. One benefit that is often mentioned is that students appreciate the possibility to watch the videos whenever and wherever they want. They can also watch the same video several times if it is a complicated topic. One property that I usually appreciate myself when I watch a video lecture is the possibility to pause and reflect on the material. And there are actually studies indicated that the value of a short pause may be larger than you may think at first. Karpiki and Blunt published an interesting study in Science in 2011, where they compared how much students learned by simply trying to retrieve the content in a text from memory. That is, students were asked to read a text and then try to recall what the text was about. If you compare this to this video, uh, you might recall that active learning is good and that flipped classroom is about replacing lectures with videos and active learning in class. How much they learned by doing this was then compared to what they learned by studying with a concept map. A concept map is simply a diagram that illustrates relationships between different concepts. And the following is the first attempt to construct a small concept map of what you've heard so far in this video. Karpiki and Blunt then made the perhaps surprising observation that as many as 84% of the students performed better on the final tests after practicing retrieval compared to when they were using concept maps. One point that I'm trying to make here is that whenever you watch a video lecture, make sure to pause the video every now and then and try to recall at least the key points in the material. I'm also mentioning this to highlight one of the key advantages with videos compared to lectures, namely that it's usually much easier to pause a video. Like I pointed out earlier, flipped classroom teaching is about replacing lectures with videos and active learning. When we speak about active learning, we could refer to many different things, but in flipped classroom teaching, it is typically some type of group activity, such as groups discussions or collaborative problem solving. Another popular strategy is peer instruction that was developed by Professor Eric Masur at Harvard in the early 1990s. 
A brief description of peer instruction is that it follows a few simple steps. First, the instructor poses a multi-choice question, normally to challenge the conceptual understanding of the topic, and often selected based on how the students performed on the video quizzes. In the second step, the students reflect on the question without discussing it with anyone, and then commit an individual answer. Typically, this is done using, for instance, a clicker system that allows for everyone to see how many students selected the different alternatives. Unless the teacher concludes that everyone already knows the answer, there follows a third step, where students discuss their thinking and answers with their peers and then commit another individual answer. It also happens that the third step is repeated several times, depending on how the students answer the second time. Compared to several other active learning techniques, peer instruction works well also in large classes, which can be a big advantage. An obvious question at this point is if active learning is any good, and if it's worth the effort. And there are many papers that study this. One such study was published in 2011 and contains a short one-week evaluation but involving a large class. They had a class with roughly 500 students that they divided into two parts. They gave both groups the task of reading up on the material before class, though the experiment group was also given some questions to answer. In class, uh, the control group received a lecture by an experienced lecturer, whereas the other group participated in peer instruction. After three one-hour classes, all students were given a test, and as you can see from this diagram, the experiment group performed substantially better than the control group. These results are indeed very encouraging, and there are many studies that support these conclusions. For instance, there was a large meta study published in 2014 that also shows that active learning generally increases learning. To summarize, the idea in flipped classroom teaching is to replace traditional lectures with a combination of interactive videos that you watch at home and active learning activities in class. Since we've just concluded that the literature indicates that both of these are better than lectures, it is now tempting to conclude that the combination of videos and active learning is surely better than lectures. Unfortunately, even though I hope you find these arguments appealing and convincing, there are not so many published studies on the effectiveness of flipped classroom teaching from a learning perspective. Fortunately, the ones that do exist are optimistic, <clears throat> and if you watch my other video on how to flip a master's level course, I will tell you about how excited we are about flipped classroom teaching in that context, and about our positive experiences from it. Thank you.